Today, I'm going to be recommending books to my enemies. Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is putting a little bit of a different spin on something that Jess Owens did recently. If you haven't already seen her video recommending books to her enemies, I will link it up above for you. It's definitely worth a look. I loved her video, but I wanted to put a little bit of a different twist on it. So in today's video, I'm going to be recommending books to seven of my enemies. All of them are public figures. Necessary but perhaps obvious disclaimer, they are not literally my enemies. I just wish that they would all do better and be better and believe better things, but I believe in rehabilitation. So I'm going to recommend books that I think could maybe help these people be better and not make the world a worse place. Starting off with enemy number one, Ben Shapiro. Listen, if you have been on Twitter for any length of time, you have seen the mess that has come out of Ben Shapiro's Twitter account. I don't listen to his podcast, but I see it. I see a lot of things come through. There's a, there's a lot of mess we could go in here for. But listen, for Ben, we could make the world a better place, but sometimes making the world a better place starts in your own home. And for Ben Shapiro, I really think that's where we need to start. So the book that I'm recommending for Ben Shapiro is Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. Listen, Ben, if you're watching this, this is a fabulous nonfiction book that is well-researched about female sexuality and pleasure. I think you should read it. I really think it could make your home life, your time with your wife, a happier, better place. Based on the tweets you made about the song WAP, I think this would be a useful book for you. Of course, as I'm trying to film this, my haunted ring light is back. I, th I think my haunted ring light also wants better books for these enemies. If you missed the internet losing its mind over it, Ben Shapiro tweeted this about the song WAP, and this has led to a lot of very entertaining tweets and memes and, you know, attention from concerned citizens who are worried about the apparent lack of pleasure his wife might be experiencing in the bedroom. And so again, Ben, I really think that this book will help you begin to make the world a better place starting at home. We'll go from there, but let's start small. Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. Definitely worth a read. Next on my list of enemies is Mitch McConnell. Ah, Mitch. <sighs> Listen, <laughs> there are a lot of books I could recommend for Mitch over here, but I, I narrowed it down to two. These are, you know, among the more egregious things in his political stances and voting records that I think maybe these books might help address and make better. First is a book that actually just came out, brand new, unlike Mitch McConnell, that's okay, we're not ageist, but uh, A Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. It's set in 2083, it's a mix of climate fiction and first contact with aliens, but this book does a really great job of showing you what the future might look like given the realities of climate change and the problems of capitalism and predatory companies. Mitch, you might want to pick this up. Maybe you can think about your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren who are inheriting what, what you have left them with your refusal to believe in climate change and your constant support of the companies who are contributing to all of the problems. So A half Bill Garden by Ruthanna Emrys you're also going to get some queer characters, some polyamory, some gender identity stuff. So, you know, we're just going to throw a lot into this book that might be helpful for you. But really, I picked it for the climate change thing, which is quite urgent. My other recommendation for Mitch McConnell is that we need to talk about his voting record on civil rights. The NAACP gave him an F in his his voting record supporting civil rights. And, uh, you know, he, he has had some supposed slips of the tongue, again, in his treatment of African Americans. So, Mitch, the other book that I think you should give a try to is Ring Shout by P. DeJelly Clark. This is historical fiction meets horror. It's set around the release of the film Birth of a Nation. And in this novella, KKK members are actual monsters. And there's a group of black women who 
hunt them down. I hope you can see the relevance. Maybe this will be helpful for you. So a half bill garden and ring shout. This one is very short. This one is not that long either. I think you can you can handle it even with everything on your plate. I, I would highly recommend these. Give them a try. Moving on down the list, we have Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. Now, Ron, you seem very concerned about the children, very concerned about what's happening in schools, and also very homophobic. So I thought, what better way to give you a window into healthy, age-appropriate ways children can learn about gender and sexuality than to recommend to you some children's books? So Ron, there are a lot of books I could have recommended, but I decided to pick up a couple that we had here that I think are great places to start. My first recommendation is called It Feels Good to Be Yourself, a book about gender identity by Teresa Thorne. This is a really excellent age appropriate way for kids to be introduced to ideas about gender identity. And that includes cis, trans, and non-binary. You could buy this for all of the kindergarten classrooms in Florida, and it would help make them more inclusive, accepting spaces. And you know, this isn't saying that everybody should be trans or non-binary. There's also a kid who tells his parents that he is in fact cis and uh, you know it's supportive of that as well. So since you yourself seem a little bit confused about gender identity and the validity of gender identity, uh, this book might help you. Again this is perfect for like four to eight year olds. So really really great accessible information. Um, I don't think you should have too much of a problem understanding w what's happening here. So uh, it feels good to be yourself first recommendation. Then, when you're ready for something a little more advanced, you want something more for like 8 to 12 year olds, I have this great graphic novel that is adorable and cute, but also deals a lot with inclusivity and different family structures and race. Uh, that is The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. It's adorable. It has little dragons that grow tea leaves out of their heads. And there's all these different family structures casually in the background, some of whom are queer. There's a couple girls who have a really cute little crush on each other that is completely age appropriate and normal, just like you would see a crush between kids who are heterosexual. Uh, yeah, I think this is a really good one. Again, it's got lots of pictures and illustrations, very accessible. Another one you could totally put in classroom. So Ron, I know you're worried about the children. Here are a couple of great recommendations that will help you think a little differently about things and their books that you could give to the children in Florida. So you're welcome. Next up, you know, we can't leave out the US Supreme Court. So Clarence, you're up. Clarence Thomas is one of the Supreme Court justices. They recently overturned Roe v. Wade. His opinion was one of the ones that's been talked about a lot, and he's also hinted at overturning other things that are, for instance, supporting gay marriage. And you know, Clarence, I understand that your wife is a conservative white woman who was possibly involved in some of the January 6th stuff, and that she's saying stuff to you at home, so it seems. But uh, I think maybe it might be time for you to, number one, reconnect with your roots and also get a little bit better understanding of the importance of abortion and empathy for women who need abortion to be safe and available in their lives. So I've got two book recommendations for you. My first recommendation is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. Now, this is not a book I have read yet, but I have friends who have, and I have read detailed reviews of it, and it sounds excellent. It's set in a dystopian future asterisk? Maybe not, but but in theory when it came out, dystopian future where all abortion is outlawed, 
including IVF, and it follows some women and how that impacts their lives. So you'll get some real world case studies, you'll get to see the slippery slope of what happens when you decide to start outlawing abortion and all of these really conservative states decide to take it way farther than they should, and then you have 10 year old girls who have been the victims of sexual abuse who are uh, like maybe not able to access safe abortions, or if they are, the doctors that tried to help them get prosecuted. Oh, no, that's not in the book. That's happening. Yeah, that's, uh, but you should read the book because it gets worse and could get worse. So Red Clocks is my first recommendation. <sighs> my second recommendation is a classic. Maybe you've read this before. If you have, I think you should go back to it. Maybe this will help. You should read Sister Outsider by Audre Lorde. It's excellent. Do you see all the tabs? Excellent. Amazing book. It is a collection of essays from one of the preeminent black feminist thinkers. And, uh, you know, this tackles class and race and gender equality and homophobia. And it's, it's brilliant. I think you should read it. It's written by a queer black woman. And, you know, I think there are many things that you could take away from this book. Hopefully those recommendations help you. Maybe we'll see some positive things happening on the Supreme Court. Otherwise, I hope Congress can get their act together and uh, put some things into law that they should have put into law a long time ago. You know, I'm realizing this is going to be a spicy video. This is probably the most political any of my videos have gotten, but, um, you know, it's time. I, I, I feel like I feel like it needs to happen. So next is the only literary adjacent public figure on this list. And of course it is JK Rowling. Joanne, Joanne, um, thank you for tarnishing our childhoods. Love that for all of us. Uh, you know, Joanne has a lot of ideas about gender and what it does and doesn't mean to be a woman. And, uh, you know, they're, they're not great ideas. They're terrible ideas. They are harmful ideas, in fact, and contribute to the incredibly high rates of violence that trans people experience, the incredibly high rates of depression and suicide that trans people experience. And, you know, Joanne, I know that some of this is coming out of a place of fear. You've opened up, you've talked about it. I get it, we need to move past it, but talk to your therapist about it. Good. Uh, glad you can recognize that. Now maybe you can realize that like that is your own fear and not reality. The people who actually are probably afraid are the, the trans people. But you know what? Let's read a couple of books about trans people where either they're happy books or they're books where the problems are not about them being trans. So I know you have a lot of concern for the children. So my first recommendation for you is Pet by Akweke Amezi. Now this book does deal with some difficult issues. It does deal with abuse of children. However, it is not because our main character is a trans girl. She is happy living her best life as a trans girl and trying to help somebody else who is experiencing abuse. So, you know, great novel about a trans kid who helps a friend and also is happy and comfortable in her body. It's good. It's great. It, it won a bunch of awards, hence the stickers. It's a good one. By a trans author also. Another recommendation that I think maybe if you read this it will help like calm those fears is about a trans woman finding love and joy and happiness. And uh, that is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. It's set in the UK, so you should be really comfortable with it. It's where you're from. And it is a beautiful, slow burn historical romance about two childhood friends finding love. And one of them is a trans woman. And it's lovely. It's beautiful. It's sweet. <sighs> Highly recommend. So Joanne, listen. Um, please, <laughs> please, please, please try reading some other things, get some other perspectives and let go of the fear. Talk to your therapist about it, work through it. I understand that trauma can create fear, but um, what you're doing right now is harming other people who really don't need the added harm. So 
there's my book recs for you. This is surprisingly cathartic. I don't think any of these people will probably ever see my book recommendations, but I think they're good ones. Like genuinely, I think that the books I'm recommending, if they read them and took them seriously, could help and make things better. All right, next on my list, we've got two more. Next on the list is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie, Marjorie. The, listen, again, there are a lot of things we could talk about with Marjorie Taylor Greene, but the latest thing is that she is publicly saying that she is a Christian nationalist and uh, believes that the United States should become a Christian nationalist country and that would fix problems with like sex and I, I don't, I, uh, homosexuality probably, I don't know. Um, so she's got this idea that Christian nationalism is this, this great thing so I have a duology that I think she should read that uh, might help her understand the actual direction that Christian nationalism might take our country. Now, I, I could go in a historical direction. We could talk about, you know, Germany pre-World War II, but that's been said and done. I'm not a big historical reader anyway. I am a sci-fi fantasy reader. So that's the direction we're going to go. I'm going to recommend a dystopian duology by Queen Octavia Butler. No, they don't match. I really want to get the matching set. But uh, Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents. Incredible. One might even call it a prophetic duology, perhaps. It was written in the early 90s. And uh, the comparisons to life today are wild. Uh, but this might be a, a better vision into what a Christian nationalist country might actually look like. And it is not a good one. It is a highly dystopian one and a violent one and not one that I would want to live in. And hopefully you wouldn't either, but I don't know. So maybe try the books and uh, see, see where you fall. <sighs> Lastly, because, you know, I couldn't I couldn't leave him out, especially since he clearly really wants attention and really doesn't want to be left out of American politics, even after losing a election. Oh, no, wait, he didn't lose. No, he lost, but he still thinks he didn't lose. Anyway, yeah, Donald Trump. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, so I've got a recommendation for Donald Trump. Now, I don't think Donald is a big reader, from what I can tell. So Donald's Listen, I get it. I, I get that you are not a big reader, but I do have a recommendation for you. I think this is a little more accessible. It's a YA book. Now, there's there's a lot of depth to the topics this book is, is exploring, but in terms of reading level, it's written for teenagers. So I think you can probably handle it and uh, maybe read this before you get too far into your re-election campaign. Like, just, just a thought. I'm going to recommend The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis. This is another dystopian kind of Western fantasy vibe. I, I don't know why I'm recommending so many dystopian books today. Like, it's a lot. Um, I don't know why that could be. Strange. Anyway, it's a dystopian Western following a group of girls who escape from a place where men are sexually abusing them and uh, they become a girl gang on the run and take down creepy men and in the second book in the series overturn unjust systems of power and people who shouldn't be in power or try to get it illegally, I think you're gonna find a lot relevant in the series. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe a, a, a cautionary tale, if you will. It's great. I would recommend it. Very fast paced. Again, YA, fast paced, very accessible. Go check it out. It's the Good Luck Girls. It's a great book. <laughs> so there you go. Seven of my enemies who I would love to see rehabilitated because it would make the world a much better place. And, you know, if they ever pick up these books, maybe that would help. Again, this is all in good fun. And anything I said about any public figures that is not clearly proven is alleged. So for instance, Clarence Thomas's wife was allegedly involved in the January 6th things. 
do your own research. This is all based on my personal opinion. Definitely the snarkiest I've been in a video in a while, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. And hopefully you also got some great books to add to your TBR because all of these books are amazing. I think all of the books I recommended today, except for Red Clocks, I have personally read and do endorse and think are great books. So if you're curious about any of them, they will be linked in the video description down below. That said, talk to me in the comments. Do keep it respectful. Anything out of pocket will be an automatic block for me, but I'm happy to have respectful discourse about things. And for your question of the day, I would love to hear who is a public figure that you would like to recommend books to and what would you recommend to them? If we could just make people read books and make the world a better place, what, what would you do? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.